we're very excited about this technology. It is a uh, partially bio-based biopolymer, uh, and it's uh, been introduced into the market for the last couple of years. With mulch, standard mulch film, what you're looking for is water management. You know, it, it maintains the moisture in the soil. It keeps the weeds because of it being black. It prohibits particular lights that cause weeds to grow, so it minimizes weed growth. And then, in addition to that, you know, as you have um, the soil itself, you know, you, if, if you think about it, if it's bare soil, when it rains, you've got erosion, right? You, it compacts the soil. That's not necessarily the best condition for plant growth. So the, the mulch filth has a tendency to do that. And again, the, the EcoVO itself does the same performance as polyethylene mulch film, but what it provides is that end-of-life opportunity as far as being biodegraded in the soil instead of going to a landfill. And in addition, if you have a crop that normally is very difficult to pull mulch film out of, here you don't have to worry about that. We, we want you to till it into the ground with the, with the crops that you are tilling into the soil. The first thing we want to do is, is make sure that um, the functionality of the film itself meets the requirements of the farmer. So depending on the crop and his growing season, I think in Michigan it may be anywhere from four to six months. Um, it's important to know that so that you get the functionality on it before it starts to degrade. And then depending on how low in thickness they can go during this time, uh, as they till it into the soil, then it's just like if you have a high microbial content, organic matter, if you compare 0.7 to 1 mil film, that means there's more food for a certain amount of microbes, right? So the lower you go, the less food, the faster it goes away. So a lot of times what we try to do is identify um, exactly what the farmer needs. How thick do they really need it in order to get functionality as well as, well as the biodegradation over time. Uh, it's called Greencroft Gardens and they're out of the um, Okanagan area. What they did was they've been trialing our material. We kind of, we started off with roughly around one, 1 1.2 mil gauge because that's what he was using with polyethylene. And he found that in the first season he said, oh, it does the same thing as polyethylene mulch and he tilled it under and it was gone. So this, this last season we said, well, 1.2 is probably more than he needs. So we actually gave him 0.9 mils. And he went and he said, okay, I planted it. And he planted for sweet corn, which he had never done before. And he found that he was able to get it into the ground, get the warmth going. And he actually harvested two weeks earlier than what they had anticipated. So he was very excited about that because when it talks about demand and supply, he got a better value for his crop. And because he didn't have to pull the mulch film out of the field, he went right in and tilled it under, he was able to put his second crop in, which was processing tomatoes. And then after that, he says, oh, I still have enough time. After he harvested that, I still have time. Maybe I can do lettuce. So he laid another layer of film after he had mulched in the other one and was able to then get a third crop, which he had never done before. So here was an additional value besides reducing labor costs, reducing the fact that he had to pull the film and send it someplace and pay what we call a tipping fee. And now he's got a third crop that he never anticipated. So last year was the first time he'd really ever gotten three crops out of one season.